Uh, welcome. Thanks for having me. Uh, I, my talk was actually about 1 o'clock this afternoon, but uh, I'll jump in now. This is the right... Am I too loud? It's fine. Okay. Uh, well, I'm Nicolas from Germany, living in Amsterdam. Uh, I'm co-founder of Saita Energy Flexibility, and I'm, we, we co-founded the Flex Measures Project. I will uh, briefly talk about the Flex Measures Project. Uh, last time at Fostem, we also had a talk about some specifics. I, I like to introduce the project with some specific uh, applications. So last year, we talked about our uh, vehicle to grid uh, implementation, where we use Flex Measures and Home Assistant. Uh, and today also, I'll, I'll go more on the developer perspective, as, how, as a developer you would actually work with flex measures. I only have 15 minutes, so uh, I will you know, fly over it a bit. Don't worry, I mean, uh, let's not read every line of code. It's just to give you an impression, how would it would be like. Uh, with flex measures, uh, as an introduction, we have been focusing on behind the meter optimization. So that's, these are the things you find behind the meter. So it's, there's enough complexity to uh, run an optimization and find the best running times for the things that are flexible here, which are usually you know, EV charging, batteries, and today we talk about uh, hot water storage. Uh, these things are not exactly behind the meter, but they, they matter as well. In the Netherlands, we have congestion on the grid that imp influences the optimization of what you're doing. It's a constraint. Uh, and dynamic energy prices. So then it becomes quite interesting uh, as a problem. Um, right, so very briefly, Flex Measures is a, a platform that uh, takes in a lot of data, like meter data or prices, all these things, and it gives you the best timing for your flexible assets you know, as a very simplified picture of what it is. We have used it in a couple of uh, areas, like I uh, mentioned bidirectional charging, uh, in industry, in water sanitation, and uh, now we're working on smart heating as well. Uh, here's a little look on our dynamic visualization of what Flex Measures knows at any given time. So this is from the web UI of Flex Measures. You can replay uh, what happened, what data you, Flex Measures knew, and what forecast it knew. But I want to uh, spend 10 minutes have a, you know, this very brief tour. What if you were uh, an energy startup? Uh, let's say you work with smart heating, or you work with heating, uh, and you want to have s the smart scheduling for your e-boiler, as an example. Um, so these are things you would like to do. I will go through each of those. Uh, and I'll touch upon a couple of ways to interact with flex measures. You know, writing your own flex measures plugin. Uh, there's a Python client, there is a command line interface, of course there's an API, and I'll just, w while I go through this list, everything will be touched for uh, illustration, what are the things you can do. And uh, the brief picture would be that there's a house where uh, there's the e-boiler, so your, your uh, energy asset with temperature readings. There's a flex measure server over here in the cloud. Um, and all of these things, are going to happen. So there's a little bit of an architecture diagram, but what we'll try to uh, touch here. So the Flex Measures client will send temperature. Uh, it will ask the server to uh, compute a schedule for the boiler. Um, there's a data platform where we can get the prices. We'll have a cron tab because we will uh, have to do some stuff just regularly. Uh, and let's keep that in mind. So this is the first, very first step. You don't have to read everything, but uh, I'm just showing that we, uh, we provide a cookie cutter template so you can uh, quickly get up to speed, have your own uh, code structure. So you choose a name and a description, and you say, yeah, please give me the API blueprint. Blueprint is a word from the Flask uh, system because Flex Measures is a Flask application. And you get some kind of boilerplate like this. Uh, and, and that's a boil, uh, this is the one endpoint we're doing here. What if we want to uh, create a new customer for this, uh, for this project? This is a lot of code. This is basically the endpoint we wrote as an example. Uh, I'm not going to read everything. Basically, yeah, this is how you plug it in. 
uh, it's going to be plugged in flex measures and available as an endpoint. We're creating a user and an account. And maybe this is the most interesting. So this is basically your business objects. I will go uh, a little deeper here. This is the same code roughly. So you, we're creating uh, the boiler as an asset. And we're creating a couple of sensors. Here's two examples a bit bigger where we really define, we tell flex measures how to handle this. What, what kind of units are we handling and the event resolution. Uh, so that flex measures know how to, uh, what to do with them. When data arrives, schedules have to be made. And, and then if that had happened, if somebody called this endpoint, a new uh, account was made, and you, it would end up in the flex measures UI. You can see them here. Next step, let's say we measure the temperature locally. Yeah, you have your own sensor, uh, and you want the temperature data to end up in flex measures as well. Then here's a small example uh, how to use the flex measures client. Basically, it provides you with some uh, nice code to work with m easily, but it actually uses the flex measures API in the background. Uh, for fun, we actually uh, had the temperature reading in Fahrenheit, which we say when we uh, send it to flex measures. Flex measures knows the data is actually to be stored in Celsius and will automatically get it right. So this is, this is where a lot of work goes, as you can imagine. Um, but otherwise, this is just sending this reading. There's not much more. Um, you'll do this regularly from, from your local you know, script that runs on your Raspberry Pi, whatever you're doing there locally. Uh, one more step. So there's some external information we need. Temperature is a local reading from your local asset. Uh, prices are a good example of information from some other third parties that just has to also be collected in flex measures. Uh, one other example is weather forecasts. <coughs> uh, and in this example, I'm showing that we actually wrote a plugin for that. So we're uh, cloning this, this plugin we wrote. <coughs> uh, NSOE is the, the organization of European transmission system operators, and they provide a data platform so you can get various things like prices, uh, but also just day ahead allocations for all the transmission zones. And so we say, uh, we want the Dutch transmission zone. Please give me uh, the prices for that. I'll talk and we configure everything. And actually, then this is the command. So through flex measure CLI, uh, we, the, the, this plugin has registered uh, a group of commands, for instance, to import ahead prices. Also, all of this is uh, public, how we wrote the plugin, you can, you can see. So if you call this regularly, <coughs> let's say one, one time per day, you'll have all uh, the, the next, the day ahead prices always in your system. <coughs> uh, small visualization of uh, one day of prices in the flex measure CY. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, now uh, I'm not sure how much time do I have. Eight minutes. All right, that's not so bad. But the main part now is you want to actually t uh, tell flex measures to give you an optimized schedule for your boiler, right? Uh, and here I'll, uh, I'll show, uh, I could do that via the flex measures client as well, but I'll just show how to use the, the API directly. This is not so interesting, of course. Uh, you have to have an authentication token. But uh, I have to b spend a bit more time here a lot of time we uh, spend when we made flex measures is uh, how you configure the problem. How do you tell flex measures uh, the constraints of the problem? In the back, flex measures will actually take your information about your setup and your problem. Basically, you could call that business rules uh, and really translate that dynamically into uh, a linear program. So, Flex measures contains, uh, I think, three uh, different uh, algorithms, basically. We, we, are, we have one that's focusing on storage-based problems, um, and that's what we have also used for, for heat, heat batteries, we call them. Uh, we have one for if you just want to allocate processes. But it's a very important part for, the, for developing a new application that you can tell the, the Flex measures server so this is how I want you to treat this problem. Here's a constraint you don't know about, or here's a local thing you don't know about. 
And that's where, uh, you know, we've, we're working on two things, the flex model and uh, flex context. So flex context would be, uh, well, these are the prices that are relevant. Uh, we also have uh, a project where we don't use prices, but we use uh, CO2 signal, the CO2 content of the grid that is anticipated. But the, mo yeah, the flex model is a bit more detailed, so this is not all the things you can do, but basically uh, we're saying, um, well, the state of charge of this heat battery is, is this many kilowatt hours. So that's local knowledge you have. Here's some constraints. You know, I, I, I can't go under this. We don't want to go under this. Uh, and also, here's a target for you. Uh, in the morning, I need to have this much energy content in my battery. This could, I think this could also be a percentage. We're pretty flexible there. Uh, some other constraints. You can see how these translate actually into uh, constraints of a problem. Uh, and then we, you call our API to, to say, uh, well, for this, uh, the fill rate that I want to schedule for that, please start. And that will actually trigger uh, a scheduling job, and then uh, flex meters uh, will usually pass this on to a worker. So we, we, uh, in our implementations, we have a web worker and the computation workers that will handle those. And then you can call this get endpoint to check if your computation is ready. It will usually not be ready after three seconds, but uh, soon after. Uh, and then, yeah, you get your values here. So then you can implement these settings locally. You can, uh, let's say you ask for a schedule for 12 hours, then your local gateway has the plan for 12 hours. If there's anything that changes, uh, on the ground, you just ask for a new one. You'll update as we go. So that's the general behavior. Uh, I'm almost done with, with uh, you know, two of the fours here. Uh, one thing uh, we want to maybe do is in, in flex measures have a nice dashboard that uh, has the most crucial uh, data on top of each other for some in, in inspection. And then, well, you can actually... Uh, put that on the boiler asset, and then you, in flex measures, you have these nicely stacked, right? You want to see what you've been using for optimization on top, although this comes from a different asset. This is something for everybody. All the assets can use this. And we use, uh, the, as you remember, we had like four sensors or so that are relevant, but we just decided these two are the ones we want to see. So we can easily see that um, in a period of low prices, Flex measures has tried to uh, you know, fill the uh, fill the boiler at those times. Some signal here. <coughs> um, I'll skip over this a bit because uh, yeah, I, I already originally had a, a 25 minutes idea about this. <coughs> um, just as in, uh, very quickly, we also notice it's very important to also do some reporting. In flex measures, give some logic about that that you combine some sensor data so you get. Uh, the outputs of what happened, for instance, like costs, you know, that's very important, sorry. Uh, and, and that can become a, a CLI command as well, that you regularly say, okay, now uh, the day has happened, we optimized as we could, let's uh, calculate how much energy costs we had here. So combine just the prices and the fill rate uh, which happened. But we also saw already that there's many uh, more interesting computations that people want. So this is a very you know, simple multiplication. Uh, but we've uh, made a pretty complicated architecture so you can actually uh, have a lot of, uh, bring a couple sensors together for, uh, for a new result that even can be used further in your next optimization or so. It's a very flexible system we've built there. Um, this is the project website. From there, uh, you'll find the, the GitHub, you'll find the uh, read the docs, you'll find uh, more information like uh, uh, I was interviewed for a Python podcast where maybe I go into more detail. The mailing list, contact, everything's there. Um, you can also just write me directly, of course, if you're interested uh, in, in doing something yourself and joining our TSC, the Technical Steering Committee, uh, everybody's welcome. Um, and that's it. Yeah, there's... Lots of things to do, of course. I've, I've touched upon a couple things, applications like vehicle to grid or uh, smart heating and industry. But uh, the roadmap is still, of course, failed. There's so, so much things uh, in, in the energy behind the meter and, and a bit above to, to, to optimize. 
Thanks. We have time for question then. If someone wants to ask one question. Uh, you, you said that you create a linear program, and uh, what solver do you use to solve this program? What kind of a solver? Yeah, we have uh, we work with two solvers now. Um, you could, of course, also use Cplex, or, but we have used two uh, open source ones. Um, well right now, they don't come to my head. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, it, Hive, yeah, uh, that we switched to that one, and we had a different one before that are both possible. So you can just uh, those are shipped with the Docker image, even so you can uh, just configure that which one you want to use. But you can also uh, we use Pyomo as a representation for the problem. So everything that works with Pyomo, would just uh, you can use that as well. Thank you so much.